call center work is grueling. It is degrading. It is humiliating. It is one of the most debasing types of jobs you'll ever take because not only do you get ripped apart by the customers that call in, you're treated like absolute dog shit by the managers. Hey there, everybody. PT Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And welcome to another episode of Call Center Survivor. I am a gentleman who has worked in call centers off and on for the last 20 years. And I try to use my expertise to analyze the life of a customer service rep or a sales agent in call centers. In today's video, is inspired by a company and one of their training videos. And the, the title of the video uh, that they produced and published probably on their corporate website and on YouTube is called A Day in the Life of an Inbound Call Center Agent. And this is just the most insipid, just pukety puke puke production I've ever seen. One thing I want to say about this video is that it's a highly produced, highly polished video and CubeSmart must have hired a company to come in and to record this video. And the people you see in the video may or may not be real employees. I'm, I'm guessing they are real employees. But the thing you have to understand is they show this video to new employees or potentially new employees like at an interview. They'll bring you into an interview. They see that you can chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. They take you into a little room and say, hey, now we want to show you what it's really like to work at Cube Smart. And they have a big screen TV and they play it for new people whose previous job was like McDonald's or something like that. And so people see this and they're like, wow. They see the video and they go, oh, wow. Oh, it's so great to work at Cube Smart. I can't wait to come to call mom and say, Mom, I got a job at Cube Smart. It's gonna be so much fun. Everyone's smiling and they're good looking and they're happy. Oh my God. Are you crazy? I am. I'm incertifiable. But the thing you don't know is that there's a whole crew of people standing behind the scenes filming this while these allegedly real employees are going about their day at work and the average person who doesn't know about tv production or movie production like i do doesn't know that there's a guy standing off set off scene with you know holding the boom mic above the employees heads and there's cameras there's lights there's reflectors off the ceiling there's like 10 or 15 people there's a director and a producer and all this stuff it's like a reality tv show don't laugh this ain't reality tv it's not. And it's it's all propaganda. <clears throat> and it's all propaganda because call center work is grueling. It is degrading. It is humiliating. It is one of the most debasing types of jobs you'll ever take because not only do you get ripped apart by the customers that call in, you're treated like absolute dog shit by the managers. And it, the, the, the funny part about this here, I'm just going to go, it's just a three minute video and I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but there's certain parts of it. Now, the very beginning of it, it starts in with a fade in from white, very bright, very happy. To get you. you know, if you're an employee and you've just taken a job with Cube Smart, they sit you in a little room or they sit you with your new teammate teammates in a, in a conference room with a big screen TV and they play it and they, they have the trainer standing up to go, Hey everybody, here's, here's a little bit about cube smart and hit play. And, and everyone's just like, you know, Oh, you know, they're like, Oh, okay. We'll watch this video. Get the happy music. I love the happy music. We're going to go work at cube smart. Woo. That's where you come in. Let's start that over. Cube smart. We say it's what's inside that counts. Oh, that's so clever. You know, they, they, they spent, they spent, they spent millions of dollars with some type of marketing agency to come up with that because it, what's inside that counts because they're storing people's crap inside storage units. That's where you come in and here comes the happy staccato plucking violin. <laughs> I'm getting so happy at work at Cube Smart. Yay! Very 
Oh, look at this. The happy. Okay. The happy. Look at this couple. Now, what do you think of this scene here? Okay. The cozy white bungalow in the middle of the suburbs. Right. Picket white fence. He's dressed in his khakis and his nice little, you know, casual business attire. He's going to get the baby girl, the smiling wife. I know when I used to go to work, my wife would just be beaming from ear to ear. Bye, darling. We'd kiss. Goodbye, darling. We'll see you in the evening. And it's just such horse shit. I mean, number one, apparently he's the only source of income in this family because she must be a stay-at-home mom. Number two, there's no way he could afford a bungalow in the suburbs with a pick white fence and have a baby. In what looks like Pittsburgh, oh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This looks like a suburb of Pittsburgh or maybe south, south, southeast Ohio or something. On the salary of a call center rep. And he's got his little lunch bag. Okay, let's go on and see his little journey to the call center. Yay! See ya. See, you. <laughs> see you. Oh, he's now, look at all the smiling employees. Smiling girl. Oh, she's so well dressed. No tattoos. No, no purple hair. Nothing like I've seen in the other call centers I've worked in around the country. She's just smiling, beaming in ear to ear. He's happy. He's got a pleasant look in his face. Got his little lunch pail. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about some of the things you'll be storing so I can recommend the best size? Oh, look at this pleasant customer. Look at her. She's she's senior citizen with her large boxes from Cube Smart. And she's got just a nice little antique table, candle, candle holders, or picture of her family there. And she's just very concerned about moving. Yeah. See, this is this is something I, I don't think I've talked about. I worked in the storage business when I first moved to Arizona in 2002. I got hired into a call center for a company called SureGuard. And SureGuard's no longer around. They were absorbed by um, public storage. But I worked in a call center. And it was one of the best call centers I worked in. My manager was phenomenal. He was great. I miss him to this day. Um, not in a romantic sense, of course. Though. No, he was, he was very good to me. And I quit to move back to Ohio. But um, the people that call in to a call center, a storage, storage company call center, are not friendly. These are people that are in the middle of divorces. They're in the middle of moving. They're in the middle of transferring from one state to another. They can't get into their unit. The gate is locked. They show up on the premises of the storage facility and the rental office is closed and they're not aware it's going to be closed. They're pissed. They're hungry. They're angry. They're sweaty. They've just driven across the country. They've shown up a cube smart. The rental office is closed and they're fucking pissed. They're nothing like this lady. Uh, well, I've got, I've got. Oh well, I, uh, I've got a couple of boxes here. Four rooms here. Um. Okay, let's start with one room at a time. Let's start with the actual bedroom. Now let's go back and take a look at the people around him. Well, she's close to what works in a call center. Most people in a call center that I've seen are extremely heavy people. I'm not putting down heavy people. I'm just saying, like, I bet you about a quarter of the people you work with in a call center are morbidly obese. And this guy's heavy. Well, she's not skinny. Nobody here is particularly skinny, including this guy. So maybe just maybe these. I don't know if these are real employees, or if these are actors. With the actual bedroom. Hey. Oh, here's another call center up now. If I ever, I'm going to be sexist here for a moment. But if I ever worked in a call center and saw a chick, that's sexist. Sorry, sorry, ladies. I'm being sexist. If I saw a young lady this gorgeous in a call center, I would get no work done. Look at this chick. Hey, oh, oh, God, she is killing me. This lady's killing me. And the cute little lockers. Oh, look at the cute little lockers. I, I had lockers in some of the places I worked, but they, they were just like old metal lockers that they had ripped out of some gymnasium, some high school that it had been torn down. They didn't have cute little name tags. Look, what is her name? Jade Thompson. She's probably real. Sorry, Jade. I'm not making fun of you, but, hon, you're gorgeous. You shouldn't be working at Colson. You should be on TV or something. If you're not an actress already, this has got to be an actress. Oh. Hey, she's happy. The storm man. Oh, and they say hi to each other. That's another lie. 
Every time I work in the call center, especially if you walk past your supervisor in the hallway, they look away. Oh, oh. Or they're looking at something else. They rarely are friendly to you. And the other people in the call center, I could never get anybody to be friendly with me in the call center. Probably because I was too conservative looking. Everybody else is like, oh, oh, look at my purple hair and the 16 piercings in my eyelid. Oh, oh, you can Andrew will set it up whenever you sign your... Now, now, her voice, listen to her voice, is real teeny tiny. Release. So, James, can you tell me a little bit about... I swear to you, every woman I ever sat next to who had the teeny tiny voice, hi, this is Jade calling with Come On, I Want to Lay in the Morning, they were as big as a house. These women were massive. And I don't know if there's something about becoming heavy that shrinks your vocal cords or the fat just kind of condense the vocal cords, but none of them, none of the women I ever worked with at any call center, anywhere, ever were this hot look, as hot looking as this lady. About some of the things that you'll be storing with us? I got a, a garage full of stuff. No, he just can't. I just got a garage full of stuff, you know? Was, you know, I got a, a fake owl behind me and some plastic chairs. I don't use anymore. One, one, five, two. So, let me, let me scroll forward here. Did a really great job. Pro oh, listen. Oh, she's getting a side by side with her manager. Yeah, she was super nice. She did a really great job. Pro oh, yeah. Look at this manager. He's a clean cut, well dressed, well spoken African American man. Nice little wool shirt on a little t shirt there. And he's just, oh, you did a great job there. Yeah, just a wonderful job. Make sure they, they don't talk to you like this in, in a call center. They just don't. Getting at the right size. Very different size. Showing the camarader camaraderie here between peers. Hey, can you come over here and help me? This does happen. This happens a lot in call centers. Oh, here's the girl we saw in the first shot. Oh yeah. So as you can see, our star pupil here. Oh, this is training. They're in training now. Look at this. This is kind. Of, this is kind of what it's like. You all go into training, you sit in these little tiny boardrooms with a big oval uh, table, and, and you have a, a screen or a whiteboard. Or any idea, like, by, by search by city? Yeah, but she's getting better. Oh, yeah. So, as you can see, our star people here in this. Oh, now, this is what most of the guys look like. I, I'm growing my hair. My hair's kind of long now. I'm going to have a, an old man ponytail here pretty soon. But yeah, most of the guys have the long hair. They have tattoos. They're all strung out and something. Like, hey, man. Yeah, I'll get you a storage unit. Sure, dude. Yeah. Any breaks, so your 15 minute breaks. So you go over different things. Bye, Bye Kelly. Bye, 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 Kelly. Bye. Oh, hi, Kelly. We'd love to see you. I'll meet you in the locker room later for some coffee. So, so if you noticed, this is one thing I find to be one of the most egregious lies of this video. The very beginning here, look at this, this nice young man with his lunch pail and his gorgeous wife with a cute little boy, cute little girl in there. The one thing that's wrong with this is two thirds of all call center representatives work second or third shift. They don't get up in the morning and this looks like this guy is getting ready to go to work at first thing in the morning. Now I can't guarantee it. Of course, I didn't produce this video and I have no idea, you know, what's really happening here. But most of us go to work somewhere around, we leave the house around 2 o'clock in the afternoon to get to work at 3. Our shift's over at 11.30. And by the time we get out of work, it's dark out. That's the first thing that I saw about this. This is just like rough. So he's ending his day. He's ending his shift. Let's see where he goes. <laughs> There's the lunch pail again. They're all leaving. Okay. Oh, yeah. so. oh, he's he's so see he's home in the daylight. So this is what this he must be a senior rep because he works for a shift. He's home. He left in the morning. He's home in the daylight. He's there's nowhere. There's no way, way in the world this is ten thirty at night. And he's he's walking through the gate of his picket white fence to meet his Crete wife. Thank you for calling Keep Smart Customer Service. My name is Chief. Yeah. 
Oh, this guy. I talked to some of these guys at SureGuard that couldn't get into the gate, and they're pissed, man. I talked to some Middle Eastern dudes that were trying to get in to deliver their shipment of, you know, they'd move some guy across the country, and these guys are like, oh, they can't get into the gate, they can't get into the gate, they can't get into the gate, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, they were screaming at me, just yelling at me, you know. It was horrible. I didn't know who these guys were, but this is right after 9-11, too, so I'm like, Oh my God, are they terrorists? I'm, I'm stuck behind your gate and I really need help getting out. Let me no, 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 no. I'm stuck behind your gate and I can't get out. No, no, you'd be, these people that get stuck inside are pissed. I can't get out of your fucking, eh, your gate doesn't work, you fucking assholes. That's what they say. Get you a temporary code and then we'll be able to get you on your way. Unless he's being kind because he's talking. The jade has got the little tiny voice and she's gorgeous. Joe, well, thank you so much for calling Keep Smart. I hope you have a great day today. Oh, look, so the standard air shift. Now, it looks like this was shot through a filter of some sort, like a neutral density filter, which makes it look like it's darker out than it really is. But it looks like their shift is a little bit later than the other guy. So they're probably leaving at you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Hey, look how, oh, look how nicely they're all dressed. She's got her little little lunch pan, her little bag. He's got his nice little shirt and his backpack. Oh, nice little, you know, modest skirt and his sweater. Jade is... At Q Smart, you don't just do a job. What do you do? You make a difference. Thank you, Cube Smart. You belong to a team. Grow with us. It's what's inside that counts. Thank you, Cube Smart. Yes. You count for eight fifty an hour. <laughs> so most of what you see in this, it's kind of it's kind of accurate. Like when I was at SureGuard, the call center was nice looking like that. It was well lit. It had white reflective material off the ceiling to reflect the sunlight. It was one of the few call centers I've ever worked in that actually had windows. And it was well lit. It was modern. It was new. We had neat desks that went rows up and down. Now, this is 20 years ago. This is right after 9-11. This is May of 2002. So some of it's real. Some of what you see is real. You do you do get a headset. And in some of the uh, facilities, you do see people dressed like that. But most of them, you see people in all kinds. I like at one call center, I was in training just for a couple of days. I was in training for Time Warner, which is now called uh, Charter or something like that. I don't know what they're called now. And this young lady showed up in an ultra mini skirt with thigh high boots and a tight shit top, and I'm almost like, and, and it was like five below zero, and we had to park across the street and walk through the freezing cold to get into the call center. And she was freezing, freezing. She looked just like a hooker. And I'm looking at her, I'm like, okay, that looks hot and everything, but what, are you stupid? We, why are you dressing like this? This is this is Time Warner Communications. Are, I mean, are you somebody's hoe? I mean, she had thigh-high boots on, I just, I just didn't get it. So you'll see all kinds of things in a call center. But I'm going to create a video that is the answer to this video, a more realistic version of what it's really like to work in a call center. And I'm going to call it a day in life and a call center agent. And that'll be part two of this video. It'll be a separate video to dazzle your eyes with.